Hello Sumi, so this is the continuation of how I made this wedding dress. This is the part two of it. So now, you know, we stopped at how we got the strap. So this is the dripping part I talked about in part one. So now this is the satin that I joined together. I want to drape the lace on it. You'll be asking why I didn't cut the lace and the satin together. If you if you if you uh, take note of the recent wedding dresses, you don't see the stitches, you don't see the joining parts because they do most of this work with draping. Do you understand? But mine, my own draping, I'm going to be doing it with a gone gum. Do you understand? I'm not using hand stitch or true. So let's go right into it and drape the lace on the satin part. So now, um, this is the front part of the dress we're working on. So you can see how I'm arranging the lace on it. You see the way I place the lace. I follow the pattern. So if it depends on the kind of lace you're working on, then follow your pattern the way you want it to be. So I just placed my pattern the way I want it to be. And you see that this lace, it has space, a lot of space for net also. So for the parts that I'm draping, or for the parts I will drape, I'm draping fully like this on the lace. So for any part that doesn't have a lace on it, I'm still going to be trimming the lace to put on it also. Do you understand? So now I want us to see this process very well. So I showed us a very detailed part of it. You can see how I'm pinning the fabric. So yes, you can drape without your mannequin. You can drape without a dress form. But I kid you not, it takes a lot of time. It took me a lot of time. I won't even lie. So you can see how I'm doing it. So what I do now is just that I'm using my pin to secure the lace to the satin fabric. Do you understand? So as you are securing it, you'll be arranging it. Do you see what I'm doing? Be arranging it. Make sure it's relaxing flat on it. Make sure it is relaxing flat on it, please. Arrange it very well because I don't drag it too much because if you drag it too much, the 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 certain parts now might just shrink it will not come up to the size you're working on anymore do you understand so just arrange it don't force it don't drag it too much if you pin any part and there is excess redo it again i did over and over again before i got it correctly do you get so don't be in haste when you're working on this part of it so you just continue this is how you will continue pinning everything you'll continue pinning everything like this both the front and back i did the same thing for it because of course you saw at part one that we already joined the back together also with a satin only so you see the same way i'm draping on this front the same way i will go ahead and drape on the back so I will just continue draping like this until I have gotten to um, the stage where until I'm done draping it fully do you understand I'll just continue like this until I finish draping on the whole material
so after cutting it after trimming it you can see that we've completely draped everything so after trimming it like this the next thing we'll be doing now is to gum you can use your hand needle to stitch it to hand stitch but i decided to use gum because i didn't have enough time i was running out of time so i decided to use gum but the gum came out very neat and very nice now the only thing i did was that i didn't use plenty of gum you know this gum gum is very very strong and when you pack it too much you will see it it will just form a very hard hard cast on the material do you get so i was using very little of it now you can see how i'm doing it i pulled the pin the pin i used to attach the lace to the satin now i put some part away so that i can see space to put the gum to attach the gum to the lace and press it to the to the fabric you can see how i'm doing it so as time goes on as i as i progress with it i will continue opening more place so when i'm done with the pattern i have opened i've removed pin from i will remove pin from the other part and i will use my gum to rub on the lace small like you don't pack it you use a little from it i'm sorry that my camera is not that great to show you the details of these things like the amount of gum i use but please don't pack it this gum gum is very strong it doesn't remove once you use it for anything it doesn't remove do you get so that's the gun with me and that's the gum i think one of it is 150 but this small one is 100 naira in the market you can see that the gun i'm using is a small gun i have the big gun but i feel because the bigger the gum the more liquid that will pour from the mouth of the gum do you understand i decide to use this small one because i don't want a situation whereby it will be pouring too much and my work will not come out very neat so i will continue with this process until i'm done attaching the lace to the full and uh, satin both front and back i'm repeating the same thing for front and back so this is how i will go ahead and do everything until i'm done now you can see that there are some space in the material where you cannot see lace you can see only the satin in this part now such parts what you do you will carry you will trim um, you will trim the pattern of lace you will trim the lace place it on top of it you can see what i'm doing you see that lace i just removed now any part where there is space place it on top use your gum to gum it together do you understand so that's all i'll just go ahead and repeat the same thing any area where i feel like the net the lace is not there enough i will cut a patch from the lace and attached to it so i will just go ahead and repeat the process until i am done until i'm satisfied with the outcome
so you can see how far we've come you can see so this is the art comb you can see that all the seam lights are covered like you can see that you're not seeing any joining so the next thing now we're going to be attaching the back and the front together so i'll be doing lining to lining fabric to fabric do you get so you can see how i'm placing it now my seam allowance that i added from the draft if you remember is 1.5 i'll go ahead and measure the 1.5 and i'll sew 1.5 from the armhole area from the armhole area i'll go ahead and sew 1.5 to the waistline so i'll just go to the sewing machine now and i'll run the 1.5 of an inch So you can see me measuring it, right? So I'll just measure the 1.5 because that's what we added to our pattern paper. So after that, we'll go to the next step. So right now we've joined together lining to lining and fabric to fabric. So this is the lining. I've joined the back and front together for the lining. So you can see how neatly done it is. That's our closure. I will be dropping the link in the description box if you don't know how to attach your closure. We did that in the part one so now this is the main lace of it i've attached the front and the back together this is what we have you can see how neat it turned out to be with the draping i did so now we want to use the lining to turn the lace right we want to turn the lace and the lining now one thing you have to make sure of you make sure that the lines are meeting the center front should meet with the center front the armhole lines they should align please if you do yours and it's not aligning please go and adjust it so now you see the strap we did in the part one i've already gone ahead to cut them into pieces right and i cut what i cut was about 2.5 of an inch for the strap it was 2.5 i cut it because i want to be able after attaching it after sewing half an inch in from it i want the other part like a finger should be able to pass through it so that you can pass your rope through it like your rope should be able to pass through it so it is 2.5 so this is me ruling half an inch from the edge of the center back that's the center back i'm rolling on where the looping rope will be right so that's me rolling half an inch so after that now the next thing i will do now i just went ahead to mark like one one inch apart but for before you start those marking leave half an inch at the down part of this um of this half length you also leave half an inch at the upper part because you know we will be turning with the lining we'll turn the upper part with the lining with a half an inch and the lower part will be joining it to the done part of the dress with the half an inch also so all these markings i did at the end of the day i did i did not use it because if i start putting the looping rope half half uh, or one one inch apart there will be space so i didn't want space at it so i ended up just putting it one after the other so before you place your looping rope leave half inch on the upper part leave half inch don't start it from the beginning so that you'll be able to turn your lining with it so you can see how i'm placing it so i'll go ahead and place all of them and i'll pin them down like this can you see what i'm doing so i'll place it one after the other and pin it you see the way i'm placing it that's what i'm going to do to everything so after pinning it down we'll just pin the whole thing down like this so after pinning it down we can now go ahead and turn with our line like i explained earlier i was leaving that half that one inch this thing but i didn't use it so i placed them one after the other closely so that there will be no space in between so that's how i did everything so like i said the space didn't count again you can see i went ahead to place it one after the other very closely because i don't want any space so i will just go ahead and pin everything like this closely like this i will pin it straight 
to the half an inch I'm leaving at the other side of it. You can see that the upper part of it, I left half an inch for the turning. Now, I will just go ahead and run a straight stitch. First of all, I'm attaching the looping rope to the lace first before I will now use the lining to turn it. I will advise you run as many stitches as you want on this looping rope so that in case they are trying to wear your client and they are dragging it, it will not pull off. I ran how many stitches on my own like you can see me do. I think I ran it about four times. So please run your looping rope stitches, run it over and over again on same line you get so now we'll go ahead and remove the pins after removing the pins now i will go ahead and turn with the lining so this is the lining don't forget if you're turning with your lining it is right side facing right side right side of the lining will face the right side of the fabric so i'll just place it on it like this and i will run my straight stitch on the center front where we have the looping rope so after doing that now we will go to the next step of the video. So you can see that I've done it. I've gone ahead to run the straight stitch and this is what we have. I will repeat the same thing for the other side of the center back. So I've gone ahead to add the looping rope to the other side. So the both sides of the center back do not have looping rope. So the next thing we'll be doing now is to use the lining to turn the full half length. Do you get, you know, we've not turned the upper part. We only did this side because of the looping rope. So we'll just turn the full half length and turn it to the right side. So this is what we have after turning it with the lining. So now to get the skirt part, now we have to calculate for the radius, like how, how many volume of inches do you have to cut on the waistline to get the radius. So the first thing you have to do, you know the full length of the gun I'm working with is 52 inches. And we'll remove 15 inches to draft for the half length that we'll be working on since you get. So that 15 inches, now you minus it from the 52 because the 52 is our full length. Do you get? So if you minus 15 inches from 52, it will give you 37 inches. So when you get 37 inches, you will keep that 37 aside. It means the full length of the skirt now that we're drafting that will be attaching to the half length is 37 inches. But you're not just going to cut the 37 inches like that because by the time you hem it, it will jump up. By the time she wears her heel on it, it will also jump up and it will come out nice, right? So now, before we go into all of that, let's get the radius of her waist line so i was trying to look for her waist measurement her waist measurement is 28 inches right now to get the radius if you're working on a 360 degree flare to get the radius the formula is 6.28 do you get so if i divide 28 inches by 6.28 it will give me 525 then the 5 and um, 25 is giving me it will be her radius do you get so what if you divide your waist measurement by 6.28 6.28 is the formula to get your 360 degree flare so whatsoever it gives you is your radius so now it gives me 5.2 i have 5.2 as her radius 5.25 as her radius now that 5.25 i will go ahead and attach and add it to the set 37 inches do you understand now if you add 5.25 plus 37 inches it will give you 42.5 do you get so the material are folded now i'm determining the length i will mark before i cut that's what i'm doing so if it gives me 42.25 which is plus the radius do you get I will now go ahead and add the heel she will wear. How many inches the heel she is wearing? Then I, I used 5 inch for the heel she is wearing. Then I added 2 inch for the hemming allowance. And I added extra like extra 7 inches to it to make it flow. Now if you see it on our body in the first frame in the picture, you see that it was flowing. So I went ahead, the total of what I marked, I went ahead to mark about 55 inches for the full length do you understand so i'll just go ahead and mark the 55 round and i will cut it so i've gone ahead to 
mark the lower part the 55 inches now you know the radius this is the radius i'm marking so what i just mark there as the radius now is 5.25 and that's what i've cut away 5.25 so i will now go to the lower part and cut the other full part of it away also so after cutting the skirt part now now we'll go ahead and attach it to the upper part so how did i attach it there was no lining i didn't add any lining to it or anything so how did i attach it i'll be showing us detail by detail video of it on how i attached it so i've gone ahead to cut it you know the fabric of so dead into four so we have to slit a side of it open and this is the outcome after slitting it open so this is what we have already i already have my net if you don't know how to make this petticoat net i will drop the link in the description box so that you can go and see how it's done so after cutting the skirt part this is what we have this is the full lower part like this is the full skirt do you get so i'm sorry as at when i was making this video i haven't gotten a table do you get so i have to use my sewing machine so this is the waist i'm just trying to measure the waist now obviously this waist is bigger than her normal waist measurement and if you're making a ball dress it is very very important it depends on you though you make it extra so that you can pleat it to give you more fullness do you get and that's what i did so i'm just measuring it around because i will have to pleat on it to get her normal waist measurement so if her normal waist measurement is 20 and i'm having and i'm having the total waist of about 40 inches i have to pleat it until i get it to 20 inches plus the one and a half zipper allowance which is into two which is three inches so please when you're pleating put the zipper allowance part in mind do you understand so after measuring it around now i will just go ahead to get the midpoint then after getting the midpoint i will know how many pleats i'm pleating on each part of the skirt hope you understand what i'm saying so i'll just go to my sewing machine and do the pleat so after making the pleats this is what i have i have gone ahead to do the pleat and it's having her normal waist measurement plus the zipper allowance so the next thing i will do now you know the center back that will slit open i have to run a straight line from the waistline to the center back but i will leave the zipper space so here now i have attached the zipper and i've run the straight line at the center back so i'll go ahead and hem it i'm just folding it i will hem the lower part of it then after hemming it i will now go to the ironing tape and iron the zipper seam so this is the zipper seam this is what we have i kept hemming gum and i folded the edges you know this lower part is not having lining so i have to use the hemming gum to make it neat and i've hemmed the lower part also so now that we're done with the lower part we're back to the upper part so i have to create a bony channel for the upper part close to the looping rope area and i'm using 0.5 because of the weight of my bony do you understand we'll be using plastic bony for this part so i'll be ruling two lines and the two lines they are 0 0.5 0 0.5 each so after ruling the two lines i'll go ahead to the sewing machine run a straight line on the two lines this thing i'm repeating for this other side of the back i'll repeat it for the other center back also because we'll be keeping bony on both sides this give your your back when you loop it it makes it give it structure it doesn't squeeze like it's just stable do you understand so now i've gone ahead to run the straight stitch and these are my bony i've already cut my bony according to the length of where i will be putting the bony into so now i'm just trimming the edges of the bony you can either trim or you use your candle to smooth in the edge do you get so i will just fist the bony through through the bony channels i've created so i've gone ahead to fist the bony make sure that it is having half an inch below or zero or um seven point zero point seven five of an inch like it is shorter by half an inch or zero point seven five of an inch so you'll be able to attach your lower part and the upper part together you see space to attach it so here is my band 
I want to turn the upper part with the band, then I will still use the same band to turn the lower part. So that's how I'm joining the lower part and the other part and the upper part together. Though it's not visible in the dress because I used patches, and we're coming to the part and how I attach my patches to the lower part of the dress. So this is me running the stitches. I'm just trying to turn the upper part of this dress now with the band you know how you turn your skirt with band that's how i'm doing so i'm just fixing the band and i made sure that i left about one inch at the side before starting you can see how i'm running it i'm just running a straight stitch so i'm done here this is what i've done i've gone ahead to turn with the band and the next thing i realized that the band width is too wide because of the length i'm working with i don't want the waist to drop too low because i've realized that your ball dresses once the waist is dropping too low it doesn't really come out so nice so i have to trim from the band because i realized it was too big i also went ahead to trim from the other side of the band also so i've gone ahead to trim both side of the band and this is what we have you can see how neat it is after turning with the band now this is the lower part like i told you ella i will be turning the lower part also with the band so what you have to do you get the midpoint of the skirt part which is the lower part which we've done that before you know we notched the midpoint where we're trying to pleat to get the right volume of pleat then you also notch the midpoint of the low of the half length which is the upper part of the dress then you pin your skirt through it so one thing i realize is this side you i have to close it i have to close the center so i'll just go ahead and run a straight sheet you can see that i've closed it i'm gonna have to close both edge so i'll just bring the lower part now and i will pin it through it but please wash this part very closely you can see that i'm only pinning it to one of the band you know the band there are two i'm only pinning it to one so i will pin it around to only one of it so after pinning it around to that one i've gone ahead to sew it so this is the other part this is the inside can you see this is the wrong part now this other one that we didn't sew through it i'm going to pin it on top i will push those those joining that we used to sew the other first part inside then i will pin it can you see what i'm showing us you can see what i'm doing i'm just pushing this other part like the the stitches we have the joining we have to join the first part of the band together i will push it inside do you know why i'm doing it like this i don't want the waistline to have any visible joining do you get i want it to be very neat i don't want to go and weave it because it's a wedding dress so i have to devise a means to make it neat so you can see how i'm pinning it it's just the same way they turn um, um ready-made skirts how they turn the band that you don't you don't see the joining in the waistline that's what i'm doing so i've gone ahead to pin it all round can you see how closely i pinned then you go ahead and sew it also so i've gone ahead to sew the band all around and this is what we have you can see how neat it is so after finishing with the lower part the skirt part this is my cape so what i did to the cape you know we drafted it and we already cut i went ahead to attach haste to it then i pressed lace on the satin then i now use lining to turn it do you get so that's what i did and i ironed it so what you have to do now we i'm just pinning the cape to the upper part so first of all i started from the center front so now i will be going to the center back also to start from there so that the armhole part will be open where her arm will pass through do you get now before you attempt this part you should make sure that you cross check your cape again to to be sure that it is equal to the same measurement you took do you get to the same right round measurement you took so mine was very accurate that's why the pinning was very easy for me i started from the center like you can see me do here on the other side 
you can see i'm pinning it so i just pin it around straight to the center back do you understand so this is it you can see what i'm doing i'm just going to pin it all down so after pinning it down i'll go ahead and stitch with needle and thread so i did the full cape the both the two capes i did the full stitching with needle and thread so you can see me and my needle and thread it was just two strand of thread i used but the, the stitching was very tight i did a very very tight stitch so please i will appeal to you to make sure that your stitches are very very tight because it might just easily pull away from the body of your bride while she's dancing or something so don't rush it make it very tight very close you get don't skip it too much make it very tight and close so you can see how i'm stitching it so i'll just go ahead and stitch it can you see what i'm doing so this is how i'm just going to be tucking it all along with the needle and thread until i'm done so that's how i tuck the full cape round very slow it took me a whole day to do it because i really took my time like i took my time to do it i was just doing it gradually but you can see i'm just fast forwarding the video for us here to save our time but i'll make sure that all the details in the stitching is shown in this video so after facing the cape this is what it looks like you can see how tiny the band is right so now i've already cut out my lace patches and i'm just going to attach it the way i want it to design it the way i want it you get so i went ahead and please i cut out the lace patches with scissors so you can see how i'm placing the lace patches so you determine depends on the pattern of your patches it determine the style how you want to put it how you want to use it to style it so you can see the way i'm placing it on it so first of all i will hold it down with my um, pin so you can see me as i'm placing it on it i'm holding it down with my pin so i'm just going to place the patches around it first before placing another one to cover the band because i do not want the band to show because obviously it's a wedding dress do you get so this is how we we'll continue i will also place patches underneath like the lower part of the gown that is flowing on the floor i'll also place patches on that part and i'll be showing us how i also attach the patches to the fabric on the lower part also so you can see how i'm doing it now after placing this um fabric with the pin I will show us how I did it with my gum, right? So these are the steps and the details on how I got this beautiful gown done. So the next part, after placing the patches, the next part of it will be how I beaded on the cape. 
do you get so you can see what i'm doing here so this is it i've already gone ahead to pin my patches now i will be covering it again with another patch to cover the band so this is me already gumming the patches to it this is me and my gun gum i decided to use the smaller one i have two gun gums the bigger one the gum that will be coming out of it will be too too plenty and when it's too much it shows on your work so you just apply a little that's why i'm using this small gun gum it took a lot of time but your work will be neat don't rush it don't pack the gum so you can see how i'm applying the gum on the material then i will stick it to the main dress so this is how i did it this is how i did everything on the patches i'm applying you can see that i'm already covering the band with the patches because i don't want the bands to show right so you can see how i'm covering everything this is how i'll go ahead and cover everything both the lower part of it it is the same thing i will go ahead to repeat for the lower part of it So after fixing all the patches, the next part is to fix the bead to the cape. So I have my small pearl size and the big pearl size because that's how I want it. So you can see how I'm doing it. I'm just fixing my um, needle to the fabric. Then I'll pick the bead. I'll pick the pearl bead. So how I did it is if I put um, a bigger one, I'll put a smaller one next. I'll put a bigger one and I'll also put a smaller one next. But one thing I did is, you know, we've already stitched the cape to the main uh, dress, right? But I made sure that as I was applying the pearl again, my needle was still going in between the cape and the top and the half length. Do you get? So it was as if I'm doing another stitch again using the bead so this is how i did it all through so after beading it all around the gown was ready and the outcome was really wonderful and to think that she sent her measurement and it was perfect on her so i'll be showing us the outcome on her body at the end of the video though i didn't get a video from her i only got a photo so thank you so much for sticking to the end of the video so this is the dress on her thank you so much for watching